Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would show you another way to make an envelope from scratch out of scraps of paper, book pages, whatever you may have on hand. I've got several other tutorials out there that shows you how to make different types of envelopes. I thought this one would be kind of neat because it it could also be used for like a coin envelope or a seed packet. And so I thought I would show you really quick what I've made here. Basically, I've used a book page to make a pocket. And on the other side, this one was scrapbook paper. And I used a card that I had in my stash and put a piece of coffee dye paper on the back side. I used a rubber stamped image for the front. And then I made an altered paper clip to go across the top. This one, I used a gel print in the background, rubber stamped, a little lined note paper. And again, used the same paper on the inside. And then this was a piece of book page that I altered the color and stamped over it. So you kind of can see the difference. And then this is another one of my rubber stamp sets. I have my apothecary stamps. So these are supposed to be like tea labels that you could use. And they're two separate stamps whenever you order them. <clears throat> and again, another altered paper clip. So let's make one. I've got a piece of book page here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to score down this line here to basically separate where the text ends on the side there. Okay. And then what I did was I just put this over on the three and a half inch mark on my ruler and then I guess I could get where you could see it a little better. And then I scored over here on the other side. I even made a pencil mark so you could see it. And then I'm going to fold that in. I'll come back and I want to do what I consider the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go right to the text here and score that and fold that over. And I want this to be four and a quarter inches tall. Let me make sure on my sample. If I remember correctly, just under four and a quarter. So I'm going to come, I'm going to back down just a little bit. And I will score across the bottom as soon as I find my scoring tool. I'll also place a pencil mark just so we can see it. And I don't need that much space at the bottom, so I will cut some of it off. So make it about half an inch. So now I've got this piece, and what I want to do first is glue this top portion down. So that'll give our pocket portion of the envelope a little bit more strength. So I'm going to set that aside. I've got another book page here and I need to measure it because I didn't earlier. And it's roughly six inches by nine inches. I want to make it three and a quarter inches wide. And I like to go where the text is not left or right. The next thing I'm going to do is going to put this at four and a half inches and I will score. And then I've got a little bit of a flap here and I think, I think it'd be okay if I just turn this in. So I'm going, no, I want to, I want to cover the inside. So let me grab a piece of paper and let's cover the inside. I've got this piece of paper here. And I think what I want to do is I will glue this down. I want it to come down below my little um, score mark here. And that'll be a good on the inside. And I may cut some of this off. So I think I want to make this at one inch. And then I'll glue this to the inside here. So I'm just going to place glue here. And before I glue it down, I'm going to add some distress inks to that edge. And I'll use my bone folder to smooth that out. 
And now I just want to cut off this excess paper. I'm going to let that dry before I fold it, but we want to add some decoration to this yellow. I've got a rubber stamp here. This happens to be my henna rose rubber stamp. I've got my henna rose rubber stamp here, and I've got archival ink jet black. Always get your re-inkers whenever you buy ink pads. That way you can rehydrate them. I am just going to stamp all over. So that changes that paper, which was a book page that I painted yellow. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for a moment. And then on this piece, I think I want to alter that so that it has color to it. I've got mustard seed, distress oxide, and a blending tool. And I'm just going to come in here and add some color to this piece. I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. This one is called a So Golden. I have a few left in my inventory of different sets of Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. And I have a coupon code that if you purchase by March the 31st, you can get 20% off. Just type in 2024 spring in the coupon code field. I'll have it in the description box for my shop. So everything is 20% off till March the 31st. Well, this sprayer is not working today, so I'm going to do something different. I am going to grab a paintbrush, and I'm going to dip it into the Tattered Angels and go over my painted paper a little bit. Okay, I decided to grab another color. I've got Garden Tea Party Sunny, which is a little bit brighter yellow. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to dry this with my heat tool. Okay, I think I got that dry enough. I'm going to use the same rubber stamp. I want to fold my edges in first before I stamp. I'm planning on putting something in the middle, so I don't really need to stamp the middle portion, but I do want to stamp around the edges. That gives it a nice pattern all the way around. It gives it that shimmer, too, from the Tattered Angels. And what I want to do is unfold the edges here, and I'll cut these at an angle. Cut the corner off here. Rid of those scraps. Use my bone folder to make sure that I really have those pressed. And let's add some Distress inks to our edges. I'm going to flip this over and glue this into place. I'm just using Aline's Tacky Glue. I add a little bit of water to my Tacky Glue just to help it flow a little better. And I'm also using this smaller nozzle so I don't apply as much glue as you might see on other projects. You don't need a whole lot, just a little. All right, line this up and press that into place. Then I'm going to go on my scored side and fold this in and score that. I have an image that I've already cut and stamped. So this was a scrap of some kind of ivory colored paper that I had. And I stamped the chamomile on there. And I thought that would look really cute right there. We could mat it if you want. If you want another layer, you could also put a border around this. I'm going to glue it down just as it is. You can use an old credit card. I just happen to have a bone folder here, but you want to smooth out that glue. All right, on the other side, I want to add some additional writing space. So I have a piece of some coffee dyed paper here. And I have my lined, or I don't know if it's lined or ruled notebook paper, but it's notebook paper stamp. And I'm going to get the archival ink out again and stamp this. Remember when you stamp that you just want to hold it even pressure all the way down. Don't rock your stamp because then you'll get a blurred image and make sure that you give it enough time for the ink to transfer to your paper. And there's our image. I'm going to quickly fussy cut this out. And let's add some distress inks. And I'm on the back side and I'll put it somewhat in the center towards the bottom and glue this down. Use my bone folder again. Prior to filming, I stamped out my little daisy and used my watercolor paints to paint it. And I'm just going to glue that in the corner here. 
I'm going to lay a rubber stamp over it just to help glue that down. I want to make the altered paper clip. So I have a paper clip here and a scrap of some cardstock. Just in case you want to know, it's approximately one and three quarters inches wide. And I am just going to fold this up and crease it, remove my paper clip, and then cut this to be the same height. So that made it approximately almost two inches. It's an inch and a little over three quarters. And we're going to use our foam folder to smooth that out. And now I need to decorate it. And just because I had these earlier, let's see if this is enough. I think it's just barely, not quite enough. But I have a book page here, so let's use it too. All right, so I'm going to add some distress inks to this piece. You know what? I think I want to go ahead and stamp on it as well. So it kind of matches the back. So I'm going to lay this piece out and use the henna rose stamp again. That gives us a little pattern on there. That's looking really good. All right, so on this piece, I think what I want to do is layer the stamped image and then the book page and then this printed paper. This was some Italian paper that I got many, many years ago. One of my online friends was making wedding invitations or anniversary invitations and she handmade all the envelopes and she had all these weird shaped pieces left over and said whoever wants them I'll send them to you so she sent them to me and I've been using them ever since all right I think what I want to do is glue this piece down first and then glue the yellow over it all right then I'm just going to trim off the excess here and smooth that out let's add some distress inks and then I'll fold it again and I'm putting the long leg of my pepper clip inside. And then what I'm going to do is add some glue. So I'm just going to add some glue here on the sides. And to help it go really fast, I like to use sometimes, not all the time, hot glue. So I've just got my Sure Bonder hot glue gun. And I'll close this up and I'll use my bone folder to kind of press. So now that's nice and put together. I'm going to use my corner chomper on the quarter inch and chomp those corners. That one I didn't get very good. Trim it. Sometimes I, I forget sometimes that I should trim those corners before I put the paper clip in. I'm just going to trim. There's a little bit of hangover here. Okay. And then I've got the word bloom that I stamped on my tiny label. Add a little bit of distress inks to it. And a little piece of lace. I was looking for my special scissors. So these aren't my fabric scissors. So sometimes I don't cut. Oh, that good. That cut. That cut. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue down and then lay the lace in. I've got a little leaf that I stamped that if you look at my stamps in the most recent, this should come up pretty easily, but it's leaves. And we're going to lay that kind of coming across at a diagonal. And then I'll put the word bloom up here. And I'll lay my block on there. And then I had a card to go inside. There it is. I just happened to have this paper from a uh, 
seven gypsies. And so it had this pattern on this side and this side, and I just trimmed it to be the size I needed and added a piece of copy dyed paper on the back. And let's stamp. There is a right side. There is that hint of rose again. Kind of ties it all together. And so this can go inside here. Now I know it's not yellow like the rest of it, but I thought, why not? And then here's our altered paper clip to help keep it closed. You could also use this to attach it to your journal page or put it in a pocket. And just so you know, reference wise, I've been working on my garden, getting some seeds planted. And that's where I came up with the size by using the seed packet. And I thought, well, this way you can add whatever you want on it and use up some of those scraps of paper. I'm going to show you again the three different ones that I made. And so I could see if you were working, you know, in a gardening journal or maybe you just have some pretty floral jour journal that you're working in. This would be a great way to use up some of those scraps of paper, rubber stamped image. You could use digital images. You could use images out of magazines. My mother-in-law gave me, I don't think I have them in here. Here they are. Um, some mailer that she got and look at these i'm i'm looking forward to using those full color images to make some things out of them i just got them and i haven't had a chance to play with them yet but i thought i'd share that with you hey i go live on mondays at 3 45 p.m central standard time if you like this type of ideas i have the live session where i'm making all kinds of things i'm there to answer your questions live it's also a great opportunity for you to fellowship with other journal ladies and gentlemen that like to hang out with me and of course Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Check out my description box for the links to the products I use if you're interested. Yes, I do have an affiliate with Amazon, so anything that I show that would be from Amazon, I get a little bit of a commission. And if you're going to buy anyway, I greatly appreciate your support. What else? Um, support the YouTube Go out there and watch a few more people's videos and give them some thumbs up and give them some comments. You know, the comments are what help us know that you're enjoying our content. So leave me a comment below what you thought about this project today. And I greatly appreciate your support. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.